On this week's episode of Rusty's Speed and Custom, I get carried away with voiceovers and we clean and organize the carport. Well, kind of. Also, we make a bigger mess. Get ready. Here it comes. What is up, everybody? Uh, hold on. Screen's looking rough. Um, I'm back again. Uh, as you may have seen, or maybe not, if I put it in or not, uh, I spent some time this morning just straightening up my crap that's everywhere. Um, if you saw my last video, you know that I was rushing when I put all the stuff away. And... Uh, it was a disaster, so I wanted to get organized a little bit. Uh, so, I, I don't really know what I'm going to get done today. Uh, I have a bunch of little stuff that I think I'm going to kind of fiddle with, uh, which is going to make this video probably kind of boring, because uh, it's not like a big exciting step but uh i'm going to try to knock out as much as i can uh and keep moving forward on this deal ha guess who's back uh it's me obviously there's no one else uh so i got started working uh first things first i need to get these uh spark plug wire boot protectors put on because i ran out of time last week to put them on the driver's side uh so kind of skipped through here putting those on uh i think they're gonna work out good and the last part you'll see right now is we pull a steering shaft out to get it ready for final install I'm about to interrupt the video, so there's no sense in me explaining it on a voiceover, but now I don't have to look up music. Ha! Here I come. Okay, I know I said I was just going to voiceover this stuff, but I wanted to cover this really quickly because I, if you know about it you're gonna think i didn't do it and if you don't know about it you want to make sure that you do it so uh maybe you've seen maybe you haven't i don't really know how the whole youtube time works but um i am working on the steering shaft for this thing because now that we've got plugs and wires and headers in I want to lock this steering shaft in because uh, it it shouldn't have to come back out hopefully um, so I want to show how this shaft kind of goes together and what to look out for if you're doing this because I don't know that they all come this way so uh, I'm going to spin this around and show you and then get back to work. So, hang on. Okay. So, I already Loctited and tightened the set screws on this end, uh, which you should have seen already. Uh, this is the U-joint off of this end. So, I went ahead and took it off. Because I wanted to show that this particular setup, they came with holes already drilled for the set screws. And it's not a, it's only on, it's only for one of the set screws. The other one they have just going in the side and they actually did the same thing on this. There's this one down here goes all the way into the shaft. And this one just runs into it. And on the truck side, there's actually, I don't know if you can see it, but there's actually a, there's already an indent 
into that where it goes on the steering box uh, for the set screw to index on. And on the column side, hold on, there's a hole for the set screw will be able to go into there. So, that's all very important because if you don't have that basically is going to interlock everything where you're not just relying on the pressure of the set screw to hold it in place. There's actually, there's actually like, it's going to be mechanically locked together as long as those set screws don't come loose. And that is why I'm using this, uh, red 271, uh, Loctite. So hopefully none of that stuff comes loose, but if for some reason you don't have a set if yours isn't like that where you don't have a place for the set screws to go into make sure you drill some sort of uh it doesn't have to be a hole necessarily but at least drill a, a recess for that set screw to lock into because you want all this stuff to be mechanically locked together uh not just relying on the friction of the set screws to hold it um it's a good piece of extra insurance. I was expecting to have to do that on this. So I was pretty happy when I pulled the set screws out and saw that they actually did it for me. So uh, that's a huge plus. But I wanted to talk about that because it's important for safety, like steering, steering and brakes are the two most important things because uh, obviously you lose steering it's a bad day. You lose brakes. Also probably going to be a bad day. So, uh, yeah, I want to touch on that and I'm going to get back to work. Ha! Huh, you actually thought you were going to get away without hearing me. Uh, quick side note i did not mention uh there's a radius on these uh u joints and they do not allow the lock nuts to go all the way down so i had to modify some washers make sure your lock nuts are tight i know you guys are gonna get tired of hearing from me but uh before i put the steering shaft in i wanted to get the power steering hooked up and that is what i'm working on here uh, it took a little finagling, if you will, but uh, it turns out I didn't need an adapter or anything. Uh, this is the factory line from the S10, uh, and as you can see, I had to bend it a little bit. I'm sure you can see the little kink marks in it. Uh, I feel confident it's going to work just fine, and we should have good power steering, hopefully. So... And last but also not last, because I have a lot to do, uh, steering shaft installed, loctited, ready to go. Come on! Hey, everybody. Uh, welcome back. Uh, you know, I've learned that good YouTubers deserve a lot more credit than people give them, because... Uh, I have been doing a bunch of really boring diagnostic work. And there's a lot of them that can make it entertaining. I'm not one of those people. But, now that I've figured some stuff out, I'm going to show you. Because, uh, A, I gave some false information in my last video. So, I want to clear that up. Uh, if none of you have caught it already, uh, Honestly, that video's not up yet, but, uh, yeah, we'll address that. And, uh, I figured out a pretty cool little system for checking my electrical work, uh, cause I don't, uh, how would you say it? I am not qualified to wire a vehicle on my own. I did it anyway. So, uh, let me show you the stuff I've been working on. And then I am going to take a lunch break because it is 
almost 1 30 in the afternoon already and i've got nothing done ha anyway uh let me do the thing where you look the other way not at my ugly face anymore okay so basically looks exactly the same as it did before uh you should have seen me get the steering shaft all put in uh she's tight she's tight on that header but uh We'll see. I'm also a little bit concerned about the set screw and that spark plug wire, but uh, I gotta kind of do some more figuring before I worry about it too much. Uh, we got the boots put on this side. I did, uh, I, I tried to show it. I don't know if it'll be in there. Uh, I got the power steering hooked up, kind of. This is janky. But I don't need it because um, this pump came off a van that had Hydro Boost. At least the best I can figure out. That's what this was for. Uh, is a low pressure feed for that, I believe. Um, these hoses here are set up for this reservoir. I got to figure out where I'm going to mount it. And then I can kind of change those around. Uh, you might be wondering to yourself, why aren't you just using a power steering pump that has a reservoir on it to save you that hassle? Uh, that would be better. But, uh, I don't have that, and I have this. So, we're going to see if we can't make it work. Uh, so what do we do? Plug wire covers, steering shaft, power steering's hooked up-ish. Um, then I dove into electrical stuff because I was worried about some of my wiring and that's where I kind of screwed up and I got to clarify with you guys and show you uh, what I screwed up and how not to screw it up if you're doing the same thing. Um, yeah, so let's get into that. So first things first, I rigged up uh i feel like this is pretty cool actually for testing electrical because obviously i don't have a battery or nothing in this thing uh and this is a little bit lower power than a battery so um you know for me i was able to kind of hook it up and go around and check all my wiring make sure nothing was getting hot or we weren't letting the smoke out of any of it which we didn't luckily so i did a bunch of troubleshooting because so on these these m12 batteries uh if you're looking at the battery this way the left side is power right side is ground so i hooked a ground wire up over here to the engine block and then i just stuck i stuck a fuse in the positive side and i uh, kind of bent the fuse a little bit by a little bit, I mean 90 degrees. So I guess more than a little bit. But I put a spade connector on it. And that gives you a power and a ground. And the uh, first thing I did was run the power straight to this lug. Which would, goes down to the starter. And I thought that would be fine. Uh, but I realized I was only getting power to certain things. And... Uh, not other things, which was, took me a little while to figure out, but, uh, I needed to hook battery power straight to the back of the alternator. Uh, so what I'm going to have to do is run a wire between that post and the back of the alternator. No big deal. Uh, that's why I didn't tape up any of the ends of my looms yet. So that I, I'll pull, I'll just run another wire through there, put an end on it. Uh, no big deal because I currently have it hooked up that way with just jumper wires and it seems like pretty much everything works so let me show you um, so this I, it looks like a mess but this wire off of the battery is coming over here to the back of my alternator from the back of the alternator here I'm just running 
it's just a extra wire I had laying around and I just have it I didn't even put an end on it I just snuck it behind that nut there and that, what that's done is giving me power to everything so I've already checked um, I have key on coil power wire coil power to the MSD box um, I have this unhooked just because I don't want anything I didn't want anything weird to happen but I've got my key on power here uh, so that's good that's my century coil power uh, which was the pink wire on the truck to the pink wire on the MSD box uh, so that all seems good um, at least what I can tell I haven't checked power to the coils or none of that stuff because I'm not there yet I just need to know the basics so I checked I have key on power to the alternator um, so that should excite the alternator once we get to the point of getting this thing running uh, and then where I screwed up I said in my last video this green and white wire that went to the ECM uh, I said to put uh, I said to hook it to these orange wires which were power it the orange wires power a bunch of stuff but one of them is the fuel pump relay which is right here and i want to keep this relay so the issue with that is it turns out this orange wire is constant power it's not key on power so by having the green wire green and white wire hooked to it and hooked into the relay you end up with constant fuel pump uh power which is a problem you don't want that so luckily it uh, worked out pretty well actually this pink and black wire seems to pink and black seems to be key on power uh it's key on power for the alternator and i think for something else but i don't remember but this was the key on power for the ac uh relay which obviously for right now uh, AC is not happening so luckily for me I left I, I left the pin on this hold on so the the pin that goes in here let me that's uh, hold on uh, I've got a mess going on over here don't worry about it so the pin let me see if this will show up this is essentially what the pin looks like on the connector and how can I show this essentially there's like there's this focus there's this area here where the pin or where the the male side goes into the female pin but there's this little area behind it right here and if you take uh, I don't know what I did with it because I'm just losing everything today uh, here it is hold on there's a little tiny I don't know if you guys can even see this on the camera because I can't see what you're seeing but I took this little tiny eyeglass screwdriver and you can go in the back side of that pin and pet just push on it a little bit there's a little detent and if you can push that over you can slide the pin out uh, so luckily that pink and black wire I did that and didn't cut the end off it so what I was able to do is unpin the green and white connector and just slide the pink and black connector in its place and now we still got let me plug this back in hang on now we've got this plugged back in um for now i just covered this with plastic because it it is a live 12 volt wire uh we've still got our battery and everything hooked up so we can go over here and we got a door buzzer 
because the key is in and we have the brown wire off the alternator the brown wire off the alternator should run this uh, bolt gauge which it appears to be working because we're running that little battery so I'm sure that's probably about accurate uh, we've got check engine light and we have a brake light um, you know those will probably stay on forever uh, it's impossible for you guys to see but we have dash lights um, the the lights are kind of a mess because well they're laying right there and missing light bulbs and stuff. But um and uh you guys will not probably be able to hear it because of all the other stuff going on around, but the fuel pump is working. Uh with key on so that's good news um the bad news is well i hope that fuel tank's empty because i'm, I'm part of the reason i did all this is because i wanted to uh i wanted to try and pump whatever is in the tank out and nothing is coming out so either we have a plug line uh, plug filter plug pickup or no gas in the tank so no gas in the tank would be the best option but I don't know right at this moment but anyway that's uh that's basically what I've been doing all morning and a little into the afternoon yes I just tripped um so yeah that's where i'm at i'm going to take oh something else uh i screwed up on that drive shaft i bought uh it uses i'll be honest i have I, this first time i've messed with them or seen them uh it has uh u-joints that use a clip on the inside of the cap not the typical clip that you pinch and put on the outside and that turns out to be a huge problem that I didn't anticipate so uh, the $50 I thought I was getting a good deal on a drive shaft I actually screwed myself out of $50 so that's fine I guess uh, just burning money that's what building cars is all about so um, yeah I'm gonna take a break and then I'm going to try and figure out what else I can get accomplished today. And at some point I got to go pick up some stuff because I need, need some fittings and lines and stuff. So, uh, yeah, I'll see you in a while. Huh, it's me again. Uh, so I'm going to show you what I've got going on. Uh, I believe I'm going to have the uh, radiator, that's the word, uh, mounted here in a minute. Uh, but I wanted to show you real quick. It's like a quick and dirty mounting system. Also, so when I bought this truck, there's all kinds of miscellaneous hardware from it being taken apart and there's also miscellaneous hardware from other stuff that have been taken apart including let me show you uh this radiator i don't know what it's out of i uh, don't believe it's out of this truck but it might be i don't know um there's also another smaller radiator that came with it and a whole bunch of stuff so uh i found these uh like rubber radiator pads and i don't believe they're for this truck but i added a little hole for the 
doohicker there. And those now fit right there. And then let's see if I can put this together with one hand. Uh, my radiator should sit like so on the rubber isolators, which is good. And then these, this is going to get tricky pretty quick. This was actually uh, bolted to the core support, and I believe it's the top mount, the top rubber isolator for the AC condenser maybe uh but it was bolted up it was bolted inside there so i would assume that's what it was for uh, all i did is i rebent this tab right here and hold on hold on wait a minute uh there are some can't really tell, but there's these pre-existing holes in the course port. Uh, yeah. Right there. And that uh, should be able to bolt up just like so. And like I said, it's going to be ugly, but I believe it'll be functional and I can always come back and make it better. In theory. So I'm going to set you up real quick and we'll see. I got, what else did I get? Where's that other, where's the, I also bought this little uh, inline deal for the steam vent. Uh, so I don't have to drill into the water pump or do any other goofiness. I can just split the top radiator hose, which there was also one of those in the bed of this truck when I bought it. And I think it's gonna work. So we're just really pinching pennies here, but uh, I really wanna try to get this thing moving under its own power for as few dollars as possible. So um, yeah, I'm gonna set you up. I'm gonna fold this for a minute and I, hopefully we'll have a radiator in this thing mounted by the end of the clip. Maybe. Probably not, though. Ha! <laughs> so, in theory, uh, I should be able to just put this like this. Put my bolt. Probably can't put it that way because it's probably going to interfere. So let's put it the other way. Maybe. Is there any chance this is the right size? Nope. Of course not. Please hold. Wrong way. Stupid. I don't love it. But it'll probably work for now. It's kind of the theme of everything I'm doing here. Don't get frustrated by the little things. The little things will piss you off just like it's doing to me. Anyway. It looks pretty crappy. But the radiator for all intents and purposes is attached let's see here i ain't gonna do it May not work. Let's cut 
put some more off of here. We're going to cut a pretty good chunk out of here for this. See how that goes. Okay, well, it's another one of those days. Uh, I worked most of the day. Oh, sorry, I don't know where you're pointing. Uh, and it does not look like I got much done, but I don't know. I don't know what my excuse is today. Uh, I mean, we kind of got the radiator mounted-ish. I don't love it, but it'll probably work to move it around at least. Um, I got to order a bunch of little stuff. Um, yeah, that's just the way it goes. Uh, we did get all the electrical stuff kind of figured out, which is nice. Uh, I've been kind of worried about that because I kind of wired it up blind, but I think we're looking pretty good on that. So that's a plus. Um, I'm gonna have to blow the fuel lines out and kind of go through that. That'll probably be next week's project. Um, yeah, it's just what it takes. It's just a lot of uh, a lot of little things to figure out, and it just takes me some time. But uh, I'm sorry. I know these. Uh, videos are not exciting because we're not doing anything super cool uh, or making super good progress but uh, I am working on it and I'm trying to get somewhere so uh, thanks everybody who watches uh, and I don't know go work on your junk because uh, it's a slow process even when you work on it every week and it's even slower if you don't so, uh, keep that in mind. See you. Thanks for watching.